Hi, I'm Denshi. So if any of y'all have been following up with my channel, you might know that I actually went to Southeast Linux Fest this year. And in today's video, I'm going to recount my experience and also show you guys my presentation that I gave, since I don't think the people at Southeast Linux Fest have uploaded it, uh, which is a shame because I really like giving it. So I began my journey at the airport where I took an American Airlines flight to Charlotte. Needless to say, the landing wasn't exactly the most smooth I've ever had. but I did make it in one piece. The airport was pretty cool and Charlotte itself is really beautiful. I love the nature everywhere. It reminded me a lot of some parts of Italy where you kind of have this weird mix of urban sprawl with all the natural landscape, which has kind of been untouched besides what had to be built over. Uh, and then you also had the hotel we were staying in, which was really beautiful. And of course, Linux Fest itself. The venue was really, really nice. Apparently somebody told the FreeBSD people to show up to the Linux conference. I don't know how that mishap happened. Uh, but yeah, the room I was actually given the presentation in was this one. And now I'm just gonna play the clip of the presentation. It's, it's recording. Is it meant to be green when it's recording? Is there a, yeah, hold on. Oh, hey, look. Are you gonna, pl are you gonna play chess during my talk? What do you? <laughs> Am I that boring? Okay, I guess you probably heard this. All right. It says 11 on that, and it's not it's not green. But we're just gonna hope that it it works, I guess, and that, like, hope that the camera is pointing somewhat at me and not like there, where it looks like it is. But we'll figure it out. All right. Hi, I'm Denshi, and in today's talk and not video, I'm gonna be talking about PubSub XMPP is social media. That's like a really like you know baity title. It's not social social media there's not going to be you know all the regular features you have on social media and something like an xmpp pops up but uh, i thought it was really catchy so i decided that we're not really going to talk too much about using it as a regular social media but we will we will cover some other stuff all right so just as like a primer just in case you forgot this is xmpp that's the logo really pretty really nice uh, and what that stands for is extensible messaging presence protocol now what that really means is chat, right? So it's it's just you chat, you do chat messages over it. You can do all these cool things like Omemo encryption. You got Omemo encryption in group chats, and you also have voice and video calls, and you know direct peer-to-peer -peer file transfer. All these things which are really cool for like a chat client, right? So when you're messaging somebody, you can. I like the file transfer one because you can basically send, you know that, that common meme people go after where they're like, you know, it's been what, 50, 60, 70, 80 years of computers being mainstream and there's no like agreed upon way to share a file from like a phone to a computer and we either have to do torrents or we just have to plug it in. And actually XMPP has a solution for that. You can just message somebody, get their IP and share a file and it works through something called Jingle. The voice and video call thing is also something people have a big misconception about. Everybody's like, well, you know, XMPP is like antiquated, it's like IRC, you can't do any advanced features on it. Actually, you can. You can, you can actually voice and video call people on it pretty well, which uh, reminds me, uh, hold on, I'm, I'm doing a call right now. Let's see, Let's see if this works. This is gonna be the moment of life or death. Did, it, did you get it? Hold on. Hey, look at that, so it's working. So there you go, there's your proof that you can actually voice and video call over it. It's not like vaporware, it's real, you, you can. I didn't make it up, it did not appear to me in a dream. But the other thing at the end is multi-domain design, which we're gonna get back to. When you set up an XMPP server for chatting with your friends, you, you're asked to create not just like example.org or whatever for your server, you also have to create like share.example.org and proxy.example.org and like I think the other one is uh, there, there's another multi-user chat or like chat.example.org like, and you know why, why is it designed that way well, we're gonna learn that in a second but before I do that hey there want to share all memo keys that's in reference to the encryption right so if you have, uh, have any of you ever used Matrix before, the other messaging protocol, if you guys heard of that. So if you ever tried to use that, or even any other encrypted message, well, 
some of them are like co-encrypted, like Signal, WhatsApp, whatever. When you message somebody on Signal, what happens is there's an automatic exchange of keys and like it's all handled by the server for you. And when you get like, say your phone breaks, you get a new phone and you install Signal and you, you know, you're asked for like the security pin, right? Or something like that. Or you're asked for some kind of persistent password. Now what they're doing is they're taking your encryption keys and putting them on, on their server and they're locking them down with a password you choose. And so with XMPP, there's nothing really quite like that, which depending on how you view it, it could be like a massive loss of convenience or it could be actually like a very good secure feature. But that's why Elmemo is actually terrible and that's why this meme is really relevant because every single time that you message somebody new on XMPP, you have to reshare the keys and it's like, it's like a whole ordeal. Most like programs will do it for you, but yeah. Anyways, you may have heard of XMPP from anonymizing networks like Tor and ICP and videos comparing it to other protocols. Uh, see, this would have been funny if Luke was still here, but he disappeared. But yeah, you, you probably heard of it just from people saying how different it is from other things and not people actually using it. But it is getting a lot of adoption recently. But back to multi-domain design. So I was talking earlier about how you can't just have like example.org on XMPP. You also have, you know, muck.example.org or share.example.org. And at the very basic level, yeah, you have example.org. Your XMPP server is hosted under that domain and that domain is your, it's just your top level base XMPP domain that your server is identified by. So if you're an XMPP user, say you register for, I don't know, my server, which is denshi.org, your username would be billy at denshi.org, like an email. And what happens is, because it's federated, anybody can message anybody else so long as the server lets you access that server, then you can, you can message anybody using the same model. It's similar to how on Matrix you have at and then a username, and then they have a colon in the domain, it's the same thing. Or like email, where you can have gmail.com and yahoo.com, even though you're on two different servers ran by different companies, you can still send emails to each other. And that's because they all use the same protocol. It's the same idea here. So that's your base domain, right? Like you need that to have an XMPV server. Now, I mentioned earlier, it can be an anonymizing network. So that could be an I2P address, could be a Tor address. It can run on everything, but you basically have to have someone that. Now, in addition, you're asked to create these like extra little uh, side domains, these little subdomains that represent different services you're running. Now, I don't, I don't think there's like a clear like uh, agreement on what the rationale was behind designing it this way, but it was designed back in the day where DNS queries are like pretty good for discovering services, and so here we are. I'm not going to dwell too much on why you have to create subdomains, I'm going to dwell on like what those actually mean. So at the very basic level, we have share. So when you're asked to create a share.denshi.org, or sometimes they call it upload.denshi.org, you're creating this subdomain, like a little extra domain that refers to your server or some kind of service where users can upload and share files. So when you say I send somebody an image on XMPP, the link they get is a link from share.denshi.org or whatever that is. And so you can, you essentially can have it as a separate service if you want, whatever, but you know, we understand what that is. It's a, it's a sharing service. The next one is MUC. Now MUC stands for multi-user chat, which as you can probably guess is just chat rooms. So that's where all your chat rooms go. If you ever join a chat room on XMPP, it's probably called something like Billy's room at muck.billy.org or something like that. Then we got Proxy 65. Now this one was a little bit confusing when I first learned about it, but if we go back to what I was saying earlier about those file transfers, this is a feature in XMPP that essentially aids those proxies. And it also helps you with voice and video calls because it acts as like an intermediary for transferring the traffic. And so we understand the rationale behind it. Now everybody setting up an XMPP server has probably had to make these domains, but the most enigmatic one for me was this one, is pubsub.example.org, what? Like, and, and so, what is that? Like, why, why, why am I being asked to create something so weird? Everything else makes sense for a chat server. You know, I'd want to have file sharing, I'd want to have multi-user chat, I'd want to have a proxy service for voice and video calls. You know, those are features everybody wants to use every day. What's a pubsub? And it's, no, it's not a, <laughs> It's not a sandwich at a pub, that's, you know, that's what I thought initially, but 
I, I started doing some more looking into it and try to figure out what it was. And you know, I was doing all this research, Google and around the place, and what I found absolutely terrified me. There were no answers on Stack Overflow. Nobody had bothered to put anything in. It was completely blank. And so I, I had to start doing some digging. We're gonna have to do this the hard way. So let's start at the very, very beginning, right? So what, what is PubSub? How do we get to that acronym? So PubSub it stands for Publish and Subscribe. At the very, very basic computer level, right? You have two people that want to communicate, like one computer and the other computer. And we have this thing called a request response, where it's say this guy sends a request to, I don't know, a floppy disk. I couldn't find an icon that looked like a server, so I just, I just picked that. And so emojis suck, man. They just keep adding all these things, but they never add the stuff that I need. They don't even have like an RSS icon. And so then the floppy disk, once he's done doing whatever the request was by the guy, sends it back to the guy and the guy has to respond. So notice how the floppy disk has to listen for the, re the request and then it gives a response. All right, now that's fine. Now, that sounds great, right? But what if, um, you know, the floppy disk can't do the work by himself? So like suggest, um, suppose that the user makes this request to the floppy disk, right? And the floppy disk is like, oh, actually, I need help. I can't process this request by myself. So for example, one of the good ones I saw was YouTube videos. When you upload a YouTube video, right, you're not just uploading it to YouTube. YouTube has to process it and compress it and like check it for copyright. So imagine um, this guy is sending a YouTube video to the floppy disk server. That's, I guess, the identifier. And it needs help because it needs it compressed. And so it contacts the CD server and the CD server needs help and so it contacts the DVD server and then we end up with this chain of just people contacting other people. And that works when it works, but the problem with that is that every single one of those times, so when that guy sends a request to the floppy disk, he's waiting and the next guy's waiting and the next guy's waiting and they just keep waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. You're sending a request to a server awaiting a response because the model is called request response. Now PubSub fixes this kind of, sort of, in, in some ways. The way that it works is imagine we have another emoji, we're gonna call him Pubby, because I thought that was really funny. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna do the whole thing again, but we're gonna do it with publish subscribe. And so let's start with, I don't know, uh, he's uploading a, a I don't know, I, I thought it was gonna be like a document or something, but let's go with the YouTube video analogy. Let's say the guy from earlier wants to upload a YouTube video to the floppy disk, and the floppy disk accepts it, and it does the work. Let's say its job is to upload it to the server. And so the floppy disk would essentially be the entry point into our new publish subscribe system. Now what's going to happen is the floppy disk, once it's done with the work, isn't going to give it to the next guy in the line. It's going to give it to Pubby, who's like basically a broker who controls all the stuff in the middle. That's why you may have heard of like MQTT brokers, like PubSub brokers, like Redis or whatever, they kind of control the operations in the middle. So now that he's done with that, he can relax because he's, he's done his job. You know, his job was to upload the file and now he can chill. You know, he's not got any more responsibilities. Unlike in the previous part where he was waiting, right? He was, you know, he was doing what he was doing and he was waiting for the CD to get back to him. Now he doesn't have to do that, he's chilling. Now the next thing that we gotta do is Puppy's gotta check a scroll. The scroll is a list of subscriptions. So when he uploads that video, what happens is there's certain servers which might be subscribed to raw uploaded videos, you know, like the compression server. It wants to know what all the raw uploaded videos are on Puppy's list, and it wants to receive them so it can compress them and give them back. And so, say the CD server is responsible for that. And so he knows that it belongs to the CD server. That's its job to compress the video. And so it gives it to the CD server, and the CD server does work. All right, we're chilling. And then once the CD server is done with that, it gives it back to Puppy, and it can relax because it doesn't have to hand it to the next guy in the line. So notice how, and then I don't know, let's say the DVD server is doing something else like copyright checks or whatever, and it can it can be have it handed to it, and it can chill. And then after that, it gives it back to the user, for example, and we're done. Now, why all these extra steps? Well, I mentioned earlier that were anything to break in the middle of that, like if, say, the floppy disk couldn't finish the upload, or maybe there was a failure in compression, or I'm using this YouTube analogy, but really any part of the process went wrong, what could happen is Puppy could just keep the data, and it could be given as soon as a server was available. So with publish subscribe, the, the same thing is analogous to 
Having a list of people who are subscribed to, say, a feed, which we're going to talk about a little bit more later, and being able to send the stuff to them when they're ready to have it. So you can essentially have, say, a new article ready for all these people interested in penguin-related articles. And we're going to send it out to them, but if somebody doesn't have you know, an internet connection at the time, they're not going to miss out on it. They're eventually going to get it, which is the advantage of having this kind of mediator server in the middle. Now, this is all like, this is fine, right? So the mediator holds the result in case any step goes wrong. And the most important part, right, is that list of subscriptions that he has. Now, like I was saying, the main focus of this is topics and messages. So you have uh, the topics, like say compressed video, raw video, whatever it is, or in my article example, articles about penguins, articles about lions, whatever people are interested in. And then you have messages, which are the individual articles or submissions to those. Now, weren't we talking about XMPP? Why are we talking about this boring, like, publish, subscribe thing? I thought we were talking about, like, cool messages and, like, voice and video calling. Okay, well, let's get back to that. Uh, imagine if Billy wants to write an article and gives it to Puppy. And we've created a publish, subscribe server, which instead of managing YouTube videos, actually does this, where we send articles, say, in the red category to users who want the red-related articles or we send the articles in the blue category to the users who want the blue-related articles. And the reason it's done this way is because that's a lot more efficient than this, which is where all the users ping the server at once for the article. Now, this is how RSS works. How many of you are familiar with RSS, perhaps? You guys use it or, yeah. So when you're, haven't you ever noticed that if you have like a, a trillion feeds on your phone of RSS, right? You're essentially having to send out a ping to all these servers everywhere because, well, you have to contact them to get the new information. Now, with PubSub, you essentially can send all that to the users who need it, like as a server, so you're not unnecessarily giving stuff to people who don't need it, and you also can give it to them as soon as they're online, too, uh, in direct ways. So in the same way that you can have you know, direct messages on XMPB that arrive to you immediately without you having to re refresh a feed of messages, you can do the same thing with articles. So imagine those people were XMPB users, and then we get the XEP0060 publish subscribe, which brings us around all the way back full circle to what we were talking about initially. So this specification defines how you can have a, a uh, publish subscribe module implemented in XMPB, which explains the existence of that PubSub thing which we were looking at earlier. So what have people done with this? Like, well, this is great and all, but how have we actually applied this into a practical, usable thing? This is something called Movim, which is a, I'd say, rather popular XMPP client that, apart from having support for all the basic features and whatnot, also has support for everything from an article sharing to even RSS feed duplication. So what it can do is on the server side, on your XMPB server, you can set it up so it takes an RSS feed from a specific website. I don't know, I'm gonna show you guys an example later. And it turns that into a pub sub feed, which is much faster and gets the users directly like a message. Now I will say that, you know, for most slow blog applications or whatever, not super applicable since people are probably gonna refresh their RSS once a day and you're probably not gonna publish more than one blog post a day, hopefully. <laughs> you're not addicted to blogging or anything. But if you're, say, I don't know, um, a notifications company or you, know, you wanna send out push notifications, Publish Subscribe is actually the leading way to do that. Google has a massive Publish Subscribe server, which they, if you have a paused phone, like you know, have a Google phone with, with Google on it, right? Google services, the Google Cloud messaging on it, that, that proprietary software relies on a Google Publish Subscribe server. It doesn't use XMPP, but it does use that same concept. So this is a client called Movem, just some basic background. Um, I'm gonna try this the best that I can, right? I, I'm not a French, guy, I don't speak French, I, I used to, I learned to live in school. The guy's name who developed it is called, I'm gonna try my best, Timothée Josson, that's my best attempt. And so he's, I don't know what that, I, is, can somebody explain what animal that is by the way? It, it looks like, I don't understand, it's like, it's like a dog, but like a horse, and it's got like a little neck, and it's like a trash can, or like a piece of trash with some 
questionable stains at the end, but I don't understand what it's meant to be. If somebody could explain, I really hope it's not something inappropriate that I don't realize what it is, right? Like, I'd be, that'd be really terrible. But, yeah. So, summary about Movem. It's, you know, it's a Linux fest, obviously. It's free, you know, it's free, rare, it runs on desktop and mobile. It supports most XMPP. It's, it's actually so funny. We were talking about it earlier. It advertises itself as a social media platform, but it's actually one of the most solid. There's a feature in Movem that just says, turn off all the social media aspects and just use this as a chat thing, which is really cool because if you do that, then you can really just get away with using it as a very, very good chat client. But apart from that, it's, it's actually pretty good. It's also self-hostable and not standalone, which is a pretty big drawback. So if you want to run Movem for your own, you can actually run it on your computer, at least not without, I guess, routing it through your web browser. You have to connect to an existing instance, which adds like a whole other layer of like people hosting XMPP clients and servers, which is weird. There used to be none, by the way. There was like no Movem people hosting it besides the main company, but recently a bunch of people have actually created them. All right, so one of the cool things it has is um, this list you can check where everybody's public subscribe notes are here. So this brings us back to why we had to have that pubsub.example.org. That's what those end up being. It's all these different categories people run on their servers of different things. Now, these are some, some of them, but I've actually seen people done do like news.example.org and it's only like news feeds and blogs.example.org and it's only blog feeds or something like that. And you can have this very efficient way of sending people articles on your XMPP server in like this organized way. So that's why pubsub.example.org exists. Which is still really terrible because if we think about it, we've just spent all this time talking about it, but the only implemented example is this one program made by this guy with this questionable profile picture that I don't know what it is. So all this technology and all this development only for the major users to be like notifications distributors. All right, well, that's enough yapping. Let's do something practical. I'm tired of talking here all day. So what I'm gonna do actually, this is gonna, might be one of the most risky things I do on a live conference, so this better go right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to, in real time, set up a RSS feed mirroring thing. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys what Movem looks like as an actual client. I actually have a like test thing set up and everything. I'm just gonna open it up here if it lets me really quick. It's somebody's hogging up the internet. It's being very slow right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, do I have like a little animation I can play so the zoomers don't like you know they don't their attention span doesn't go go past. Okay, there you go. I actually got something. Okay, we're good. We're good. Uh, so I'm gonna just, I'm gonna zoom this out because I'm imagining the resolution is gonna be terrible on the screen, but uh, da, 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 da. why am I doing that? There we go. So this is an example. Right now, this is the front page of Modem. They got some Ars Technica articles. And you're probably wondering, there's no way that Ars Technica has an account on XMPB. You're right, they don't. So how are they getting this stuff up there? Well, actually what's happening is uh, the author of the software it has this tool which automatically mirrors RSS feeds and turns them into PubSub, which is really convenient because you don't have to like start publishing to both things at once. Now, the cool thing is you can actually do the reverse too. You can get a PubSub feed and turn it into an RSS feed for people who don't want to use XMPP. So if you want to blog on here, you can easily just get it out. In fact, Movem has that by default. If I were to go to, see, I can't see it on my screen, so this is going to be complicated. I don't know, a random article, like a random publisher like Ars Seneca, for example. I want to click on that. I guess it's yeah, your Ars Technica. If you open that, you can actually go, I guess you can't see it super well, I'm going to drag it down, but public page, which is accessible just to the web, and what happens is Moem automatically generates a, man, it's being very slow today, huh? Well, if this was working, you would see that it automatically generates a page for everything, but interesting. But yeah, there you would be able to subscribe with RSS. But enough of that, let's actually do something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag over my terminal as a good Linux user does. I'm going to hopefully drag this one away. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to I'm already in my, oh, I can't even see. I'm, I'm in my server. What I'm going to do is I'm going to 
pick a random blog that you guys would like to see on XMBB, like something you guys like, I don't know, like which, you guys are a bunch of RSS individuals. Luke Smith? Luke Smith? All right, let's do that one. You're getting put on the spot here. So I actually have that, I think, as one of the examples on my thing. Hold on, let me, wait. Yeah, that's good. That's not what I wanted to open, though. Let me open up the commands. Mm -hmm. I don't know why this is doing that. It's not meant to... Did the terminal just disappear? I'm just going to open a new one and bring it over. Okay. It's, it's Richard Stallman's fault. It's not mine. Okay, here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... So pro, I use an XMPB server called Prosody. Prosody has this really cool feature where you can download, right from the command line, you can download lots of cool plugins and stuff that add features to your server. One big example, which I don't know, I don't understand why this is still a plugin, why they haven't added this, is support for push notifications on iPhones, which should just be built in, but whatever. But one of the ones I'm going to install today is for mirroring RSS feeds and turning them into pub sub feeds. So I'm going to copy paste this command over here using the prosody ctl install command right here. And as you can see, we're going to be installing a module called pub sub feeds. Now I think I've already installed it, so it should be chilling. Yeah, it's chilling. So I'm going to bring that over so you guys don't see my config file. <laughs> I'm going to go into my config file really, fit, really, really fast and copy paste an example. So scrolling down all the way. When you set up a pub, when you set up any component in um, in Prosody, you kind of set it up at, like under a capital letter C component, and then the domain and the name of the component. And I named it Denshi Super Cool Pub Sub Component. That was, you know, a couple of. I think that was in my video where I set up pr uh, Prosody. If you've seen my YouTube video about that, so you can add modules to components, like you see right up there. For the file sharing one, we have, well, we have options there, but for the MUC one, we have a module which enables MAM, which means message archive management, which means your chat messages will actually be stored. And vCard MUC, which means you can see other people's uh, avatars in group chats. But what we're gonna do here is add a modules line here, and we're going to create something funny. So maybe module underscore, that's not underscore underscore enabled, and we're going to set that equal to pub sub underscore feed, which is what we just installed. All right, we're good. Now we actually have to give it an option, which is feeds, which is an array of, I think, it's like a kind of like a dictionary thing. So what do we want to name the node? Do you just want to name it Luke Smith or something? Or Yeah, I guess we'll call it Luke Smith. And so we're going to do that, and we're going to set it equal to the RSS link, which if I recall correctly, is lukesmith.xyz forward slash index XML. Did I get that on the first try? I think I did. All right. And then we just got to put a little colon, and then we're good. All right. We can also have another uh, option that is feed underscore poll underscore interval seconds, which is not really that relevant. I think the default amount is 900, so we're just going to leave it to that. So with this, what this is going to do is it's going to automatically create a new node, a new topic, so to speak, that people can subscribe to on our weird social media thing. And they're going to be able to see Luke Smith's articles, God willing, if this thing works, on that. On that. So now we're going to go and restart, and hopefully it won't crash. System CDL restart. And da, 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 prosody. I don't see it crashing, so I'm going to go and open it up and See if it works. This is still loading. I don't know why it's still loading. I'm going to just open up a normal tab instead of doing this weird, like, broken tab thing. So we were doing this earlier, and hold on, that was the public page. We were doing this earlier. Oh, it's opened it up in like a bunch of, I have like 20,000 tabs open. I, um, I made a big mistake. So we were doing this earlier, and we were checking out articles. If we go to the Explore page, we can actually see everybody's notes. I don't recommend spending too long here because people have figured out how to put really bad things on there, so don't go. But what we can do is, like, I don't know, let's say we want to go to news.modem.u. You see a, the common form, right? So you just have to put the domain here. So I'm going to call it pubsub.nc.org. All right. So now it's going to open up my note. 
indeed that is my node and oh there we go is that those are Luke Smith's articles on publish subscribe I stole your content for views and profit yeah no there you go but yeah that's that's actually it mirroring RSS feeds into PubSub what's the advantage of this well remember how we talked about how like on your phone your phone would literally have to ping like 3,000 different servers. If you're, if you're like an RSS addict, I don't think such a thing exists, but if you were, like you'd have to ping like a billion different things. And people set up like these RSS proxy services to account for that. Well, this is that, but it does it even faster. And in fact, you have like a whole interface and everything for it. And it runs as a part of your server. Now there's also a couple of other cool things that I didn't have the time to cover in this talk. Like there's, um, there's the option to receive articles as text messages, which I've tried it, but it's been really buggy, so I didn't want to demo it live because I thought it's probably going to break on the day I demo it live. And there's a couple of other things like being able to publish to it. So you can actually, as an XMPP user, you can be granted permission on a node to create new articles, which means you can really blog from your chat client in a way, although the only client with that feature so far is Mobum. And in fact, they include a personal blog feature and everything. If I click one of the articles, well, let me read it. It does, huh? Oh, wait, this is mine. Those aren't Luke Smith's articles. I'm, I'm stupid, man. Why, why aren't this showing up on? I didn't even synchronize mine. How did this work? Hold on. Oh, there's some of yours there. Okay, well, then there you go. I don't know. I think I might have done that for a previous demo and it just didn't catch them. Okay, then there you go. Oh, that's not. That is definitely not yours. I didn't Yeah. No, there's a Oh. Yeah, probably is the most, that's probably the most recent one. Yeah, there you go. Well, then there you go, yeah. So that just got there because of our thing. But... Is that because they're in the same category? No, it's because Movim is, once again, it's relying on inst like hosted instances, and I think they cache everything. I've tried to get my data deleted off it before, and they say, well, delete all your stuff when you delete your account. I deleted my account, or at least my, like, presence of my XMPP account for my server on their client instance. And they did it though. Like it's still there and I just saw it and now I'm probably gonna call the guy and have to ask him about that. But yeah, I don't know why it's like that. It's it's annoying. This thing is this thing is crushing my head right now. But yeah, that's that's actually I think that's pretty much it. Where did I put the presentation? I, I think I deleted it. Hold on, let me go back and fetch that. Uh, oh yeah, it just stopped. Okay, yeah, I'll just get it. Let me just go back to the final slide. Uh, thanks for listening. Thank you so much. Does anybody have any questions or anything like that? Or? You have like 21 minutes left. Yeah, I have, tw I do have, I don't have 20 minutes left. Oh yeah, I do have 20 minutes left. That's fine, because they give you 15, yeah. So, just letting you know. He, I think he has a question. Yeah, so the functionality You can't, you can't publish or, that's why I was talking about that feature where you could get text messages of articles because that's really the only way to get into the clients. But no, no other, no other client that I know has used it this way. This has been one of the most unique ways of using it so far. And yeah, I haven't seen it anywhere else. But there are multiple instances of, in fact, hold on, I'll, I'll pull it up. Since we have all this time, we have a wealth of time. You can just do whatever you want. Uh, I'm gonna pull it up here so you guys can see it. But essentially what you can do, this is the Movin website, uh, what you can do is you can check out, they, they rec see, recently this button, would, you would click on this button and it would say join, and it would show you all the different instances, but it will only have one, which is theirs, which is this European one. But now they have all these other ones, like, I think this is Brazilian, I don't know what that is, Earth, I, I guess we live there, bees, if you're a bee, I got a couple of other ones. Uh, you, you, that looks like a, a cruise ship almost. That monocles. Yeah, so like different servers run an adjacent Movim client. They call themselves, I think, what do they call themselves? Like, well, they say servers, but it used to be a different name. It used to be like Node or like Ship or something. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's how those work. So you do have multiple options for the client. You don't have to rely on Movim itself to host it for you. You can host your own. And in fact, if you're on Linux, you can probably run it by yourself and like loop it back. But 
The fact they haven't really smushed it down into one thing you can have like an as like an Android app or like an app image is sort of disappointing, but this is this is really the best we have, yeah. Is, is there mm -hmm. a way to view the content on those sites without like joining them? Yes, so there's uh, like I mentioned, you can get an RSS feed out of it. Let me let me get it properly done now. So if you go to now that I've like leaked Luke's articles into <laughs> into the server, right? I don't know, like Ars Technica, for example. Like I was saying, you can click on it, and then if you click on external page, anybody hosting a Movem instance can access any pops up node. Now beyond that, you can also do this on a server level. So here you go, you can, this is just a publicly, you don't have to be signed in to see this, if I recall correctly, and there's an RSS feed right there. But the other thing you can have is, Prosody actually has a module. So Prosody community, module. So if you go there, what you can see, if this, if this opens, there's actually a whole category of PubSub related modules, if I recall correctly. There's one that's RSS. Uh, that's the one that subscribes to them. That's not it. Uh, no, the word is, word is it. Oh, I think it might be Atom. Yeah, there we go. No. no. No, no, no. Oh, there we go. No, no, no. Why? Where is it gone? <laughs> well, there used to be one. It's it's definitely somewhere in there. XCP is, uh, maybe I can search for it. But there's basically a module for Prosody where as part of the web component of it, because it serves HTTP also and HTTPS, you can serve an RSS feed of a PubSub, for example, which allows you to blog from your chat client and let anybody in the world see it. And so one thing I've been interested in seeing is if there's anybody who's managed to do the reverse, because you can take an RSS feed and turn it into PubSub, and you can take a PubSub and turn it into an RSS feed, but can you take a PubSub and turn it into like a website? I don't know. I guess there will be something similar on Moven, but it doesn't really exist. But yeah, you can access it externally for sure. Anybody, any more questions, anything like that? Any general queries, anything like that? Oh. Oh, that's pretty good. That's a good question. So I'm not 100% sure how much of this is protocol level, but on Moven, let's say, I don't know, I have this test user. So let's say I want to go, I don't know, create a new blog post, right? Uh, where does it let me? There should be a, uh, there we go, blog post. You can... Is it on here or is it, no, it's not on here, but it's when you create, I think, a new node or something? Hold on, let me bring it back. There is a way to control access. There's a way to like restrict who can have it, yeah, but I think it's, I think it's, it's hidden somewhere. Oh, there we go, my bad. It's literally right here. Publish this article publicly and disable the comments. So this will show it to everybody and this will disable it. Um, oh wait, no, I think that goes only to XMPP, no, my bad. I think it's on a node level, if I recall correctly. So you, can do that on the server. you can do it on the server. I think you can do it. I know you can do it by UI on here because I've seen that before. But it would be on a topic by topic basis. So let's say I have I have my shark speed, and I don't want anybody to see my shark speed. Or like you know, I have my articles about squirrel speed. I don't want anybody but like these three people to see it. You should be able to do that. Yeah, I remember seeing an option for that. All those things, most of the stuff people talk about with XMPP is like, does that exist? Yes, it exists as like an experimental suggestion. It's up to people to implement it, which, you know, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So, yeah, that's how it works. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah, you could definitely do that. It's essentially working as password access content. That's one really good way of viewing it, yeah. However, I don't know if Movem is that all that completely figured out because I don't know how how locked down their RSS thing that I just mentioned earlier is. I've never tried that, but that is actually a pretty good application. You could use this for like a paid, you get like a paid feed of content out of it. Yeah, for sure. Yes? So in HTTP they have uh, status code, it's like a 403 mm -hmm. that says you're not authorized. Does SMTP have anything like that? So, actually, yes, hold on. I have that in the presentation. I don't know. Let me see if I can find it again. 
I completely glossed over it, which is really silly of me, but there was actually a funny example I was going to do. I don't know why it's, I don't know why it's missing. Oh, hold on. I, I, have, I just have the image. I'll just show you the image. So this is, I, I thought that was really funny because it was the example they use for when they define 060 for how pub sub work, this is what they use. And they said, yeah, like, this is our scenario for why somebody would use it. They're like autistically obsessed with having everything Romeo and Juliet related. And so their example was, yeah, this is, uh, this is the princely musings right here, which I'm going to be publishing to my pub sub feed. And so, yeah, you can, the way that XMPD works is that standards define how the XML is to be formatted for different things. And I think, um, yeah, I mean, there's just metadata and whatnot. I'm not super informed on it. I'm not a developer, but I know that it just, just XML messages with different kind of syntax and it explains what it is and the, the clients are designed to parse it, essentially. So, mm -hmm. so HTTP will have like uh, headers? Yeah. And they have the status code in the first line and then the, the payload would be like JSON or XML. Do you know the, does it have a protocol like HTTP that it's like, is I don't know. Uh, I, think, I don't know what the transport protocol is. No, I don't. I wouldn't know. I, I'd have to look into that. Like I said, I don't develop clients or anything like that. I don't know, but it definitely, it's good enough for it to be used for a lot of very low latency and low bandwidth applications. So you'll see XMPP and MQTT as well for things like Internet of Things and all those terrible Internet of Stings, as Richard Stallman likes to put it, but. You know, like they, they use that for that, and it it works pretty well. But I don't, I wouldn't be able to answer that. I'm sorry. All right. Anybody got any other interesting princely musings that they want to share? No. All right. Well, I think that's all I really have to say. The, the Yap Fest is over. You can you can celebrate. Hooray. Out of pure curiosity, how many people coming into this had like some idea of what XMPP was or anything like that? I guess, yeah, like medium, okay, okay, that's fair. And how many people had, say, like maybe you would say, like I kind of know what PubSub is, I've like interacted with it quite a while. Okay, so yeah, okay, we've had people, all right. Now let's ask the real questions. How many of you are subscribed to Denshi on YouTube? That's, that's the real questions. Yeah. You mean peer tube? You mean peer tube? I haven't run that in like ages, dude. I, I know you guys are thinking of starting an instance. I don't know. I don't know. I might, especially with like Odyssey getting sued by the. Can we just make this a presentation about why I don't like the SEC? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about them suing Odyssey, but they, to be fair, they basically gave people unsolicited securities, but whatever. This is a finance conference. I hope you all enjoyed the presentation. I'm going to just put up a few last pictures over here, and I'm also going to put the clips of me actually going back to the airport. I almost didn't get on the plane because it was really, really full, and they gave me one of those, I think they're called like priority check or whatever tickets, which they sound like a really good thing, but actually all that means is that you might not get a seat assignment. But eventually I did make it back home, thankfully. I actually had a math test a couple days after it, so it was really important. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I've been Denshi, goodbye.